Okay, good morning. So we will continue with the diarrhea. In the last class, uh, we have seen different types of uh, diarrheas and basics of diarrhea. And uh, the last topic that we have covered is how a leukemia or lymphoma or lymphatic infiltration has occurs in case of uh, uh, leukemia or lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, etc. conditions may lead to diarrhea because of lymphatic obstruction. That was the last point that we have covered. So now we will look into management of uh, diarrhea. Okay. Of course, there are different types of diarrheas are there. The management will go into differ accordingly, but this class is a superficial management of diarrhea. We will not go in detail. Detail in acute diarrheas, what we have to do. In chronic diarrheas, we have to, we have to do. In persistent diarrheas, what we have to do. In allergic diarrheas, what we have to do. That's a different topic that we will deal separately. Today is a overall superficial topic, okay, how we can manage the child with the diarrhea, okay. So we know that in case of diarrhea, the first thing what we have to do is ORS. <clears throat> ORS has to be given, okay. So ORS contains uh, sodium, potassium, glucose, etc., citrate, etc. Now previously the osmolality is about 311 total osmolality. Now there is a reduced osmolality in malnutrition to about 245 from 311 to 45 we have reduced. Uh, why this is reduced? Because uh, excess amount of the sodium will be there in already there in malnutritious child. So therefore we have reduced the amount of the sodium here. Okay. So because more osmolality may lead to fluid retention and uh, uh, so many other problems. So therefore it has been reduced. Of course details we will see in other classes. Now sometimes when we make the ORS in home, homemade ORSs, the common mistake which is done is most of the time we add excess amount of the salt. Okay, so because we are adding pinch wise, or exactly we are not calculating when we are doing the homemade ORS. So what happens is, so salt may be added more and now the solution becomes a hypernatremic. That means solution is containing more sodium, so that leads to hyperosmolality. Osmolality will be more. When the osmolality changes, there will be fluid shifts, etc. So hypernatremia may be one of the problems. So because of giving that particular homemade virus, which is added with the extra amount of the salt or more amount of the salt, may lead to hypernatremia. And the hypernatremia is, is not good actually. We have got a hypernatremic dehydration also there, which leads to toddler skin like conditions. Okay. Now suppose if the parents say the child is vomiting, so this is one condition, so that, that's why in the beginning itself, we are looking superficially and some of the common problems uh, in the management we are actually looking at, okay. Now another, this is one problem, okay, there may be hypernatremia. And one more is, suppose if the parents say that my child is vomiting, okay, so most of the time this is a problem, when you ask the parent to give the ORS in a dehydrated child or vomiting child. Uh, mostly parents come with the complaint that sir when I give the ORS he used to omit. Now this is a problem, isn't it? Now omitting again causes further more electrolyte loss and condition of the child further worsens. Now we have to take the care and we have to give a very strict and correct instruction to the parents that when you are giving the ORS it should be given in a very little quantity frequently. Okay, so frequently it should be given in a little little quantity. So that's the main thing which we have to tell to the parents when uh, the parents come with this particular complaint. <coughs> and one more is uh, if you give the ORS in excess and most of the time there will be omitting because of the taste of the virus there will be omitting and the dehydration further increases. So this care has to be taken. Now sometime by giving ORS in a small quantity also child may omit. Okay, but still you should not stop giving 
the ORS. ORS should be contained in the small quantity because although he is omitting whatever you are giving, it is not like that everything what is given to the child is omitted. Some portion will remain there only. Although you have given, for example, 100%, fifty uh, percent is omitted or fill still fifty percent is remaining there and that is helpful to correct the dehydration therefore omitting is there after giving ORS and it is not a contraindication uh, this is not an indication to stop the ORS but ORS should be given in a small quantity frequently although child is omitting it is not a, everything is omitted out some amount will remain there only so that is also helpful to correct the dehydration okay so Suppose some time omitting will be there and you are giving the ORS and that omitting is because of some viral cause, okay, viral descending infection from the upper respiratory tract now coming to the stomach and as a result there is omitting started, viral descending infection. And uh, although there is omitting, you have to give the ORS, why because in case of viral omitting, Usually virus, uh, viral omitting that will go into stop by within 12 hours. Just like a child upper respiratory infection and that will spread from there to the bottom. Gastroenteritis will come from the stomach. So when there is infection in the stomach, mein hai, definitely baby will have the omitting. But we should know that this omitting will go into stop in next to 12 hours because this is the nature. Because the stomach will cross and the virus will go into the intestine. So, uh, omitting will ho jayega, khatam ho jayega. and then there may be diarrhea. Okay. So, you should know this fact. In case of viral diarrhea, rather viral omitting, omitting usually stop after 12 years, uh, sorry, sorry, 12 hours. So, just assure the mother that he keep going on, keep on giving the ORS. Don't stop it because by 12 hours the omitting will anyway stop. Okay. So, don't stop the ORS. So these are some of the important things that you have to understand. And furthermore, earlier days the treatment for the diarrhea is by nil by mouth. That means stop everything orally and put the baby on IV fluid. This was the treatment which is given for ORS in the early, sorry, uh, treatment given for the diarrhea in earlier days. Okay. Till the introduction of ORS. Once the ORS has been implemented or introduced, then uh, this particular method of keeping the baby complete nil by mouth for some time and putting the baby on IV fluid. So this is this particular practice has been coming down now. Okay, because ORS is actually doing serving our purpose. Nowadays, diarrhea is called as a nutritional recess. Another name for the diarrhea nowadays given is nutritional recess. It means once diarrhea is there, nutritional components are not get absorbed by the body okay so diarrhea is not only the fluid which is going the diarrhea is also mean that so many nutrition is also going through that so if the child is malnutrition suppose the child is malnutrited or malnourished so we'll have often severe diarrhea already see in a healthy child if the diarrhea is taking place of course fluid is going along with that nutrition is also going and there may be some acute weight loss for some time Okay, in a normal child, anyway it will be get recovered. And uh, the severity of the diarrhea is not much. Whereas same diarrhea when it is happening in a malnourished child or nutrition, malnutrition child. Okay, so now already the child is having problem with the malnutrition. That means nutritional problem. And again if the diarrhea is there, again there will be nutritional recess. That means so many nutritions are going down. And again the child will have more problem. What I mean to say is compared to the normal child in a malnourished child the severity of the diarrhea is more. Okay. So suppose only two or three times diarrhea is there in a malnourished child. The severity is much much more than the severity of the normal child with the six or seven times of diarrhea. The reason I told malnourished child is already suffering from malnourishment and di uh, diarrhea further causes the nutritional waste. So it is very important to see the intestinal hormones or enzymes are continuously stimulated for the production. Now, this is another important uh, issue. What is that? If you stop complete feeding during diarrhea, okay, keeping the baby nil by mouth, now you are not giving anything. That means 
what is actually happening is the intestinal enzymes or intrinsic factors they are not produced because food itself is a main stimulation for the hormones and food itself is a main stimulation for the enzymes which is secreted from the GIT tract okay and if you completely stop all the food materials keeping the baby by nil by mouth actually it is a hindrance you have to give some amount of the fluid you have to give some amount of the food which is easily digestible okay so if we give them a break what happens is they will not be produced at all so once they are not produced the diarrhea will not be corrected properly so nutrition is very important okay similarly so starvation has to be avoided in a very sick child so keeping the baby on complete starvation for some time it's not a good method especially in a very sick child or malnourished child it is not a good way of uh, management you have to give some minimum amount of the fluid or food which is easily digestible so that the intestinal enzymes will not take a break if they stop producing because there is no food coming if they stop producing then again it is a hindrance and the correction will be delayed so therefore starvation is not the right method except the osmotic diarrhea that also that starvation is also only for 12 hours or 24 hours not more than that this one important thing so see this is how the old concepts are changing nowadays okay previously we have been with the concept of nil by mouth now that concept has been completely changed only in a very severe diarrhea we will go for nil by mouth and IV fluid etc but otherwise this concept is now changed once the OR has come and ORS is doing all these uh, functions because once you are giving the ORS it is also the nutritional supplement it is not only fluid supplement it is nutritional supplement because you are giving uh, so many electrolytes okay so many electrolytes will be there number one number two the younger the child more is the uh, problem <clears throat> younger the child more uh, more is a reason to avoid the starvation in the younger child you should not go for more starvation the problem will be more so child is depending on the micro and macronutrients on daily basis as there is no enough to why we should not go for much starvation in the newborn or infant or younger child why because see this micronutrients which are produced in our body or stored in the micronutrients which are present in the body so they are actually not stored in the body okay see vitamins they are also not stored in the body only few vitamins vitamin d and vitamin a they are stored to some extent and even vitamin b12 but rest of the vitamins are available from the day-to-day -day food only day to day food only you take sodium you, uh, you take sodium magnesium uh, manganese zinc nickel so these micronutrients are not stored in the body so they are taken inside from the day to day food and once you stop the day to day food in the form of the starvation a younger child will go into suffer more so it is always told that don't stop food intake in case of starvation as in case of diarrhea especially in younger children okay similarly so <clears throat> suppose uh, uh, a child is breastfeeding and child is having diarrhea and you stop the breastfeeding okay to keep the baby on starvation now this also give a very wrong message okay to the mother also psychologically it will going to affect the mother and breastfeeding may be reduced breast, secre breast milk secretion may be reduced it, it gives a wrong message to the mother and also it gives the wrong message to the society also so breast milk is always good for the baby and mother may start thinking that because of my breast milk only the child started this diarrhea and the vicious cycle starts then so therefore don't stop at least don't stop the breastfeeding okay if the child is feeding don't stop the breastfeeding whatever may be the case of a diarrhea okay so because the uh, breast milk provides so many nutrients and if you stop breast milk then child is not at all taking any of the nutrients which is required on the daily basis then how come this damage which is occurred will be get corrected suppose intestinal mucosa has been damaged now it has to be corrected for the correction we need so many micronutrients and all those things a younger infant it is receiving everything from the breast milk and if you stop the breast milk it's a big fault okay so this is one thing similarly in the older children also you do not stop the feeding only skillfully you give 
very thin easily digestible food so that there is no much load for the uh, intestine but it has to be provided if you stop the feeding at all you stop the food at all at once what happens is the intestinal secretion or hormone uh, enzymatic secretion will stop and then it takes so many days to get correct so once the intestinal secretion stops, then the pH of the intestine will go to differ. Once the pH will go to change, then the intestinal bacterial flora will go to differ. So we have a series of problems because of this one simple fault. Okay. So now, so also give the wrong message. This is over. Now, will you stop the breast milk in viral diarrhea thinking that it is causing lactose intolerance? Now, this is another important question. In the last class also, I told that. Uh, some from the superficial most of the mucous membrane always lactase enzyme is produced isn't it so that is very important to digest the lactose which is present in the milk or breast milk okay and uh, most of the time we stop the lactose milk in diarrheas because in the diarrheas the first victim is always the superficial most layer of the mucous membrane isn't it any type of diarrhea so when once it is damaged definitely there is no lactase and the problem will be always there for the lactose meta uh, digestion so most of the time we stop the milk for one or two days actually this is a big problem you our idea is okay the superficial most layer contains lactase enzyme it is not produced because of the damage and therefore we are stopping the lactose but in the way to stop the lactose intake, what we are doing is we are stopping the breast milk also because breast milk contains lactose. But we forget that breast milk also contains all the nutrients. Breast milk also contains so many other, com it's a complete food for the baby. But on the way to stop this lactose, on the process of attempting to stop the intake of the lactose, we are also stopping so many important nutrients, immunological factors which baby receives by breast milk. So do you think it's the right way? No, it's a completely wrong way. So therefore, although we know that there is some problem for the digestion of the lactose in case of viral diarrheas or some diarrheas, do not stop the breast milk. Okay. So this is the reason why we have to continue the breast milk because once you stop the breast milk means you are stopping everything. So many easily digestible homogeneous materials are going to the baby through the breast milk. Okay, you are also stopping that, then how come that damage will be get repaired? Baby will receive so many vitamins on a daily basis, that means it is not stored at all. If, if you are giving breast milk, that is available for the baby, otherwise it is not available for the baby. Now for two or three days, you are not giving the breast milk at all, by keeping the baby on IV fluids, it will give only glucose and other things. How many micro minerals it will go give? No. So Therefore, don't stop the breast milk. This is an important message. Although there is diarrhea is going on, don't stop the breast milk. Diarrhea may be there for one or two days, but still the baby will recover fast. Now, another important thing is, uh, what is the treatment now? So what about the other water or fluid and juice? Now, usually whenever there is diarrhea, sometimes we go for some of the juice fresh juice we claim that it is a fresh juice some other fluids now any drink which contains extra amount of the sugar is very very bad okay suppose you are going from fresh juice and adding some ice pieces and all and we know that we we don't know that how that ice is made how contaminated it is okay one point second one is most of the, these fresh juices are also added with so much of sucrose or this sugar and all the sugar is always dangerous already we have got the problem with the sugar okay so therefore uh, such type of uh, tetra packs or juice fresh juice they are not good uh, of course homemade juices are okay homemade you are not adding any sugar not adding any ice water etc uh, completely extracted that can be given okay but what is best is what is explained in Ayurveda what is that Manda Peya Vilepi, the Krutana Vargas. Okay, so that has been mentioned. Yusha, Manda, Peya, Vilepi. So they are light. 
they are heavy in a order manda is very light peya is uh, vilebi is little more heavier okay yuja is little more heavier like that so the best is uh, this mandas or the manda means uh, rice gruel and all those things okay laja manda we usually give laja manda laja manda is very rich in electrolytes okay so that has been traditionally used so now the present scenario contemporary science also says that instead of going for all these things that's the best thing home made food like the rice gruel etc add with some amount of the sugar and all sugar and salt not sugar salt so that is good so this is one thing so don't go for unwanted drugs in case of diarrhea continue the breastfeeding continue the feeding in small amounts okay and don't offer any external food rather than give very little digestible easily digestible food like manda peya bilepi okay that is even in case of jora watch charaka says okay <clears throat> langanam swedanam kalo yavagu tiktako rasaha yavagu so yavagu should be given to maintain the nutritional status okay in case of diarrhea or vomiting we want little less thinner substances like manda okay so this is was traditionally previously done in between we lost that knowledge that means we ignored that and now again we are coming back to that okay now um, this so many food containing uh, the ors is also coming okay that we will discuss later in case of malnutrition can anybody say in case of malnutrition we are using a ors which is uh, enriched with the food substances nowadays the latest anybody no no problem we will see later now come to the next part there is no role of the drugs actually in case of diarrhea there is no role of the drug there is no role of drug uh I am audible there for all yes sir okay so there is no role of drugs uh, this point has to be underlined okay we use lot of drugs sometimes we go for unwanted antibiotics sometimes we go for unwanted anti spasmodics or sometimes we go for some of the um, what do you say the drugs like lopramide and so many other things tambaka drugs we go for actually there is no role of such a drug what is important is uh, you have to maintain the nutrition fluid status and electrolyte imbalance whatever is going down through diarrhea if you are able to replenish it supplement it through the oral cavity through the oral route that's well and good okay so now if the stool is going out don't stop the stool this is what exactly charak also says in case of diarrhea if you see give abhaya the like abhaya like drugs and if the stool is going out if the atisara is going there don't stop it this is what charaka says 5000 years back now the people are following the same if the stool is going out and don't stop the stool it is just like stopping the flood when there is a flood there is a water everywhere but there is no water in the drinking water tap so when he is passing the stool keep on giving easily digestible liquid that so this is a very good example given jab bahad aa jata hai baad aa jata hai to dekhne ke liye to har jagah mein pani hai hai na but us pani ko to aap pee nahi sakte dekhne ke liye ghar ke aas paas pura pani hai but ghar ka tap mein to pani nahi aata hai kyunki light nahi hai jo bhi hai ek similar situation hota hai diarrhea mein bhi diarrhea mein bahut sara kya hai ki pani bahar chala jata hai ठीक है बट स्टिल जो है अंदर स्कैरसिटी होता है पानी का है ना कि ऐसा मत सोचो कि डेरे में इतना ज़्यादा जो है पानी बाहर जा रहा है इसका मतलब बॉडी के अंदर पानी का स्कैरसिटी नहीं है जब स्कैरसिटी हो तो इतना पानी कहाँ से आता है ऐसा नहीं है ऑल दो दी वाटर पोर्शन फ्लूड पोर्शन इज गोइंग आउट इन द एरिया एक्चुअली देर इज अ स्कैरसिटी ऑफ द फ्लूड विच इज एक्चुअली रिक्वायर्ड सो देर फोर इफ द स्टूल इज गोइंग आउट डोंट स्टॉप द स्टूल जो फ्लड का वाटर है उसको जाने दो ठीक है और हमें जो चाहिए फ्रेश वाटर चाहिए जो वाटर ड्रिंकिंग टैप में जो आता है तो इसलिए आप ऊपर से उसको 
सप्लीमेंट करो ओके सो वी कैन दिस इज वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग देर फॉर लॉजिक इज वेरी सिंपल वर्ड चरका सेस वही है कि ठीक है uh, अगर वो क्लीन नहीं हुआ आती सर अभी भी चल रहे कि यू गिव अब लाइक ड्रग्स एंड लेट ऑल द वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट्स गो आउट ओके देन यू रिप्लेनिश नाउ अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इज कैन यू यूज सम ऑफ द एंजाइम प्रिपरेशन और नॉट कॉन्टेम्परेश यूजली यूज सम ऑफ द एंजाइम प्रिपरेशन ओके नाउ वॉट वी आर एक्चुअली यूजिंग इज सम ऑफ द आर्टिफिशियल एंजाइम प्रिपरेशन आर यूज ठीक है so this is what i told in the previously also enzymes are naturally produced from our body by stopping the food intake what you are doing is you are blocking the natural enzymes from production and uske upar aap kya kar rahe ho artificial enzyme ka supplementation kar rahe ho to ye kahan tak sahi hai theek hai to isme koi matlab hi nahi hai body is able to produce the natural enzymes digestive enzymes but without give by stopping the food you have blocked them अगर आप फ्रूट देना शुरू करेंगे तो वह एंजाइम का प्रोडक्शन अपने आप शुरू हो जाएगा एमजाइम सप्लीमेंटेशन की जरूरत ही नहीं है हम ये नहीं बोल रहे कि आप बहुत ज्यादा अमाउंट में फ्रूट दे दो मिनिमम फ्रूट दे दो सो इट विल कीप ऑन कमिंग सो नाउ द नेचुरल एंजाइम कैन बी रिप्लेस बाय द नेचुरल एंजाइम कैन नॉट बी रिप्लेस बाय द आर्टिफिशियल एंजाइम नाउ अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज जब डायरिया होता है तो वहां पर प्रॉब्लम क्या है प्रॉब्लम इज विद एब्जॉर्बशन म्यूकोसल लेयर जो है ऊपर वाला वो थोड़ा इरोड हो गया ठीक है तो देर फोर देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम विद एब्जॉर्बशन और देर इज सम रैपिड मूवमेंट ऑफ द इंटेस्टनल मजल्स पेरिस्टालिटिक मूवमेंट बढ़ गया इसलिए वो एब्जॉर्बशन के लिए वहां पर टाइम नहीं मिल रहा है इसलिए वो कंटेंट्स ऐसी बाहर जा रहा है दिस इज एक्चुअली द प्रॉब्लम विच इज एक्सिस्टिंग इन केस ऑफ द एरिया ओके If there is some bacteria, virus, etc., causing damage, there may be some mucosal damage. Because of mucosal damage, there is problem with the absorption, or because of ex- uh, over peristaltic movement, the time given for the absorption is less. Therefore, nutrients is not absorbed; they are passing through the stool. This is a problem. But there is no problem with the production of the enzymes except lactose. ठीक है? बाकी जितना भी एंजाइम है, उसका प्रोडक्शन के साथ कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है, वो तो प्रोड्यूस हो रहा है. बट एब्जॉर्बशन ठीक से नहीं हो रहा है या एब्जॉर्बशन के लिए टाइम नहीं मिल रहा है दट इज अ प्रॉब्लम ओनली वन एक्सेप्शन इज लैक्टोस लैक्टोस लैक्टेस एंजाइम बिकॉज दैट इज मोस्ट सुपरफिशियली सिचुएटेड प्रोड्यूस इट प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द मोस्ट सुपरफिशियल लेयर ऑफ द म्यूकोस देर फॉर वन एक्सेप्शन इज लैक्टोस सो देर फॉर वट इज द नीड ऑफ गिविंग आर्टिफिशियल एंजाइम्स वी अलाउ द बॉडी टू प्रोड्यूस अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ एंजाइम्स दे आर ऑलरेडी प्रोड्यूसिंग ओके यू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट वेरी वेल सो देन यू कंपेयर विद द आयुर्वेदिक लाइन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट सो सो नो आर्टिफिशियल एंजाम शुड बी यूज नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आयुर्वेदा सपोज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव सम ऑफ द एंजाम गो फॉर कर्ड राइस वन ऑफ द बेस्ट पुराना मेथड है ना कर्ड राइस ओके इन केस ऑफ डाइट द बेस्ट इज कर्ड राइस और बटर मिल्क which is a rich source of lactobacillus okay therefore it is told that takram chakrasya durlabham it is told that in all the grani rogas takra is the best one best anupana because takra is a natural source of intestinal enzymes especially lactase lactase hame pata hai ki lactase ka hi problem hota hai hai na sabse zyada so takra is a lactase enzyme hai usme you know milk contains lactose that lactose is converted into lactic acid okay by the help of lactase and also lactobacillus enzyme or lactobacillus bacteria lactobacillus bacteria now what is the benefit with the curd is curd and takra is buttermilk is one is it is a rich source of lactase number two is it contains lactobacillus bacteria which is uh, very helpful to maintain the intestinal bacterial flora do you know one more important jo jaisa hai ki ye jo takra hai na takra mein sirf lactase ya lactobacillus itna hi nahi hai takra is also rich source of nutrients isme calcium hai isme magnesium hai 
कि मैं पोटासियम है ओके देर फॉर यूज यूर कॉमन सेंस सो आयुर्वेद में वेन देसे गृहणी में जो है तक्र बहुत बेस्ट है तक्रम शक्र से दुर्लभम सो नाउ डू यू थिंक डोंट यू थिंक दैट दिस इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वे ऑफ मैनेजमेंट ऑफ डायरिया विदाउट एनी मेडिसिन कुछ नहीं करने आपको ओके सो सपोज इफ आई गिव द एंजाम्स आर्टिफिशियल एंजाम ओनली एंजाम्स आई एम गिविंग आई एम नॉट गिविंग एनी अदर न्यूट्रिय okay if i stop the breast milk completely then it's a big blunder because i'm stopping all the nutrients coming in if i give the antibiotics and it's a biggest blunder now what is required is i have to give some time for the correction of the process or pathogenesis or correction of the damage so i will also give lactase i will also give lactobacillus and i will also give the nutrients यूजली हम क्या कि हम जब तक देते हैं तो ये नहीं सोचते कि इसमें न्यूट्रिएंट्स भी जा रहे हैं ना सो मिल्क कंटेंट सो मेनी प्रोटीन्स ऑल्सो मिल्क कंटेंट सो मेनी कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स ऑल्सो मिल्क कंटेंट सो मेनी समय मेट ऑफ द फैट ऑल्सो इट कंटेंट्स ऑल्सो माइक्रो न्यूट्रिएंट्स ऑल्सो कैल्शियम ऑल्सो सो इससे अच्छा क्या हो सकता है इससे अच्छा क्या हो सकता है देर फोर कर्ड मिल कर्ड राइस और बटर मिल्क that is the best medicine that is the best medicine therefore in indian diet also aapko pata hai ki last mein jo hai prayasha madhuram madhura sabse pehle lena aur last mein jo hai aapko kashaya ras wala lena so one of the best example one of the best drug that uh, diet that can be select for the kashaya ras is takra takra contains ushnavirya hai usme kashaya ras hai so therefore uh, takra is the best medicine तक्रम शक्र से दुर्लभम इंद्र के लिए भी जो है तक्र दुर्लभ है इसलिए बताया नाउ वन मोर मेथड विच इज फॉलोड इन द मोर कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी साइंस इज अबाउट द प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड एज वेल एज प्रीबायोटिक्स नो दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज नॉट इज एमर्जिंग जो भी है concept of probiotics and prebiotics everything is artificially made probiotics artificially made prebiotics okay i think you know the difference between probiotics prebiotics and symbiotics okay so they are nothing but some of the drug uh, some prebiotics is the one um, which is good for the uh, which which provide environment for the development of the intestinal bacteria yes? एंड प्रोबायोटिक्स वो है कि जिसमें वो एंजाम्स भी है वो बैक्टीरियाज भी है और वो बैक्टीरियल फ्लोरो को डेवलप करने में भी हेल्प करेगा ओके सो दे टू हैव नाउ इफ यू गिव द प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड प्रीबायोटिक्स सपोज आर्टिफिशियली मेड देन दे आल्सो हैव सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स बिकॉज इन द मार्केट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड प्रीबायोटिक्स आर अवेलेबल now everybody claim that our is best and still there is a controversy kaun sa acha hai kaun sa bura hai okay at times it is told that lactobacillus gg is best aisa bola jata tha so opinion keeps on changes spiro spiro lact milta hai spiro sorry spiro lact milta hai theek hai neutral lact milta hai bahut sare cheeze jo milta hai but if you think giving this artificial probiotics or prebiotics whatever why can't you implement these prebiotics and probiotics in the food itself therefore kashapa says ahara is mahabhishanja you give the medicine through the food only now all the concept of prebiotics and probiotics can be fulfilled by giving some of the traditional indian food traditional indian diet now this concept is jo contemporary sense mein aata hai this may be well suited for the foreign countries or western countries where the food culture is different but indian culture ka beauty yahi hai ki wo log ne is cheez ko apna culture mein hi dal diya hai hum log ne apna culture mein hi ye jo health concept ko include kar diya hai that is the beauty okay so now so many preparations what we are using there are already prebiotics or probiotics hai suppose if you are using prebiotics or probiotics basically kya fermented items hona chahiye because fermented items so kya hai ki they are very good for the 
डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द इंटेस्टनल बैक्टीरियल फ्लोरा क्योंकि जहाँ जहाँ पर फर्मेंटेशन होता है वहाँ पे बैक्टीरिया का डेवलपमेंट एसिडिक एनवायरमेंट है दैट इज गुड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फ्रेंडली बैक्टीरियल फ्लोरा ऑफ द इंटेस्टाइन सो वी हैव गॉट लॉट ऑफ फूड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टेक डोकला इट इज बाई द फर्मेंटेड फूड डोसा इडली जिलेबी फर्मेंटेड इट्स मेड ऑफ फर्मेंटेड फूड सो वी हैव इंक्लूडेड इन अवर डैट ठीक है सो दे दे फुलफिल ऑल द क्राइटेरिया ऑफ प्रीबायोटिक्स प्रोबायोटिक्स इम्बॉडिक्स एक्सेट्रा ओके सो सो नाउ बटर मिल्क डोसा हो गया इडली हो गया बाकी भी बहुत सारे फर्मेंटेड आइटम्स है हम जो यूज करते हैं सो दे आर द नेचुरल सोर्सेस ऑफ प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड प्रीबायोटिक्स वी हम कन्वर्टेड अवर फूड इट सेल्फ डाइट इट सेल्फ इन टू ए हेल्दी डाइट मेडिसिनल डाइट ओके सो वाई वी हैव टू टेक इस आर्टिफिशियली द प्रॉब्लम वहां से शुरू हुआ कि हम लोगों ने जो है अपना थोड़ा बहुत ट्रेडिशनल फूड को हमने भूला और साइडलाइन किया सो हमें जो है ये मार्केट में जो मिलता है वो ज़्यादा अट्रैक्टिव लगा और हमारा जो दादी माँ नाना जी नानी दादी सब जो खाते हैं वो फूड से हम डिविएट हो गया उसके बाद ये सब प्रॉब्लम आ गया ठीक है सो नाउ बिकॉज कर्ड एंड बटर मिल्क नॉट ओनली कंटेंट्स अ लैक्टो दिस इज ऑलरेडी आई टोल्ड बिकॉज कर्ड एंड लैक्टो बैचलर्स दे कर्ड एंड बटर मिल्क दे डोंट नॉट ओनली कंटेंट्स अ लैक्टो बैचलर्स दे आल्सो कंटेन मोर इजली डाइजेस्टिबल प्रोटीन्स एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स इससे अच्छा क्या हो सकता है कोई आई का मैंने माइल्ड टू मॉडरेट डायरे में कोई आई का जरूरत नहीं है ठीक है और गैस्ट्रिक अपसेट आपको होगा ही नहीं है डेली आपका डाइट में ये सब है तो ओके सो देर फॉर आयुर्वेद सेज एट द एंड ऑलवेज यू हैव टू टेक दी बटर मिल्क कशहर रस वाला चाहिए आपको सो वी कैन से वन थिंग अबाउट द मार्केट अवेलेबल प्रोवाइड इज दट दे आर हार्मलेस एंड यूजलेस सो दे दिस दिस इज गिवन फ्रॉम द कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी साइंस सो आप क्वेश्चन आ सकते हैं तो मार्केट में जो मिलता है प्रोबायोटिक्स प्रीबायोटिक्स इसको खाए या ना खाए तो आप ये बोल सकते हैं ये हार्मलेस है खाने से कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है बट यूजलेस भी है बेस्ट क्या है फूड में जब आप ये करेंगे That is the best thing. So therefore, always remember when Charaka says कि गृहणी में जो है अगर तकरा is the best अनुपाना उसका पीछे इतना सारा reasons है क्योंकि more than सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम कैन बी करेक्टेड जस्ट बाय तकरा ओके सो देर फॉर इन ऑल द इंटरनेशनल प्रॉब्लम्स जी आई टी रिलेटेड प्रॉब्लम्स इन आयुर्वेदा ऑलवेज यूज अनुपाना एज तकरा okay that itself corrects many of the problems anyway but the present scenario if you look into that zinc so usually contemporary science also uses a zinc now question comes zinc should be given or not yes zinc must be given take a present recommendation yeah. the only thing along with this natural food substances only thing that you can give in case of diarrhea is a, one is ors and another one is zinc बाकी आपने पूरा को पूरा जो है फूड से ही कैसे ही कर सकते ओके वाई प्रीवियसली ये भी नहीं था जिंक का भी नहीं था बट जिंक मस्ट बी देयर बिकॉज जिंक डेफिशिएंसी मे लीज टू नरिशमेंट माल नरिशमेंट ओके माल नरिशमेंट हो सकता है और दूसरा जिंक इज इम्यूनोलॉजिकली ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जिंक इज इम्यूनोलॉजिकल एनहेंस के लिए भी जिंक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दो डोंट फॉरगेट टू गिव जिंक इन एनी पेशेंट ऑफ द एरिया any source of zinc you may can give some other tonics or either you can also go for some of the ayurvedic supplement which contains zinc okay which contains like rasanjana is there okay or uh, we have got uh, daru haridra or rasanjana is there and uh, the, uh, the rasaka preparations are there then uh, we have got uh, some of the anjana preparations are there theek hai yashada basma is there so these are actually the uh, zinc containing substances okay now zinc is also important immunologically zinc also prevents the malnourishment and it helps in healing the intestinal ulcers and abrasions if it is happening it is also good in reducing the recurrent respiratory tract disorders i told vitamin a and zinc is very important even for repeated respiratory tract infections also okay zinc rich food has to be taken okay so this is one important part in the treatment uh yes now we go for the approach to the child with the diarrhea 